Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and today I've got a little update on some modification projects, starting with Rune. It took a bit for me to feel up to sculpting physically, but it was finally time to get the legs going together. Unfortunately, it took a lot longer than I expected, since I had to do the clay in a lot of layers. The first step was cementing on the new hinged knee joint I sculpted and cast. I ended up smoothing out the back of the knee more, removing what was left of the ledge, so that it would be a nicer transition to the new hinge. Getting the epoxy to stick ended up being really difficult, and I had the new knee joint come off several times before I finally got it to anchor well. I pressed the knee into the thigh piece after every step to make sure it was fitting well, using pieces from a plastic bag to make sure the thigh didn't get any epoxy clay on it. If it did, I could just wipe it off with water while it was still wet, but it's easier to just protect the leg as I'm doing the fitting and filling in gaps. While I had wanted this to be done and have all these parts painted by this weekend, doing just a little at a time and then having to wait several hours for the epoxy to cure meant I couldn't do anything fast. In some ways that might be better because it forced me to pace myself a lot better this week. Slow progress is still progress, and I was able to work on a few other things in between while the parts cured. A lot of my time went into book proofreading, since the last book in Rune's series goes out at the end of this month, and I've been trying to give it a lot of last minute polish, but I got a lot done for various doll projects too. After the epoxy to anchor the new knee joints cured, I put the legs together so I could mark where I needed to extend the back corner of the joint to fit better with the thigh piece. This extra support is a small thing, but it'll help improve his stability and make it more likely he'll be able to stand up, which is kind of the whole goal of redoing his knees. I use water and some silicone sculpting tools to get the new additions as smooth as possible because the smoother they are from the get-go, the easier it will be to sand, and that means I'm less likely to put myself out of commission again by overdoing it, so that's all good stuff. But since I was still working on that on Thursday night, it was pretty obvious I wouldn't be able to paint before this weekend. So I allowed myself some time to work on another hybrid project too. Since the Sumeralis I ordered back in January recently arrived, I needed to figure out getting the Fairyland Soren head I wanted to use with the body onto it. While Fairyland does sell the neck connector for their mini dolls separately, they rarely have them in stock through Denver Doll Emporium, which meant I was looking at a potentially six month long wait just to get the doll's head on. I figured I have enough skills by now to make something on my own, so I took a few measurements from the doll's neck opening and decided to 3D render my own connector. I'm still a complete novice when it comes to rendering, so I took the easy route and used Tinkercad to design a connector based on the measurements I took. I ended up making three versions. The first had a key with a cradle for the S-hook, but it was hard to put on and the Zoom hook was too big for it. The second used a key that would just hold the elastic loops, and I later went back to add feet to the bottom of the turn key that would hold it securely to the top of the connector ring. This took maybe 30 minutes to design using Tinkercad, using just the primitive shapes available. Once I was happy with the final design, I took it upstairs and plugged it into my 3D printer to let it do its thing. This here is the second version of the key, so it doesn't have the feet on it, but I figured it was good enough to share while the final version prints. I replaced the S-hook with the ring and key by pulling the hook and elastic up with a string puller that has the connector ring on it. A neck puller probably would have made it harder to get the ring on, I think.
Getting the S hook back in afterward was a little hard to do, but it was important to have it hold the elastic until the key goes in. Then I pulled it up again, popped in the key, and now the hook can be removed, but I leave it for now because I'll be switching to the newer key design. This one works fine for the moment though. It holds the head on securely and offers a decent range of movement. I'm working on making some neck connectors in other sizes that I can put on Thingiverse because quite a few of them aren't sold separately, and I think enabling hybrids for dolls that don't have connectors available, such as the Feeple 65 and Feeple 60, would be a fun thing to do for the community. Hopefully I'll have those done soon. I also made some great progress on a special project, which is my second original head sculpt. I shared some photos and sneak previews on Instagram, but I'm not ready to do a whole video about this guy just yet since he still needs a few adjustments, and I want to get Rune finished first. But hopefully in the next few weeks, as I finish redoing Rune's mods and I can look at other projects to work on, I'll have more information about this guy to share. The paints I wanted to use for Rune also came in during the course of the week, so while I still need a good green because I no longer have the one I originally used, I can at least get started with the skin toned airbrushing. The light flesh base is going to be for mixing color matches for other resins, while the flat flesh color on the right looks super yellow when wet, and then dries to a shade just a little bit darker than the color I dyed Rune. So adding a drop of the white paint should give me a perfect match that requires very little work which was definitely worth the $5 I paid for the paint. At the end of the week, it was finally time to put Rune together to see if the modifications to his legs worked, and I'm super excited to say they absolutely did. Getting him to balance takes a lot of effort, but I was able to get him to stand with one knee slightly bent, and he was way more stable than I ever expected. Seeing him up on his own was a huge relief, and it made me feel a lot better about starting this part of his modifications over. In the coming week I'll be doing the sanding and painting, and then I can get down to the more fun parts of making him a new wig and some clothes and finally having him all back together. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.